next let's talk about hydro in a little more detail. Uh, hydro is known for having very high capital costs and very low operation and maintenance costs. And uh, so a inter really interesting thing about hydro is you think of hydro often as having essentially zero variable cost. There's no fuel cost at all. And it's really just a matter of whether you allow the water, the freely available water, to run through the turbine or not. But using the water behind a dam to generate a megawatt hour of electricity does have a cost. It has an opportunity cost. And that is, what if I didn't generate that megawatt now, but waited until later? What would its value be then? So the decision in a hydro unit to use a megawatt hour's worth of water is a decision to use it now instead of at another time. What we could get for that water by waiting to generate later is the opportunity cost of using it now. So it's not really true that using the water stored behind a hydro facility has zero variable cost. It has zero fuel cost, but it actually has an opportunity cost, so we need to think about what it could earn for us at another time before we dispatch it. The capacity factor is uh, variable, um, and for a dispatchable hydro facility, they can be ramped up and down very quickly to follow load. So they have the advantage of having uh, a really good ramp rate, a fast ramp rate, a very short time between the time you decide to dispatch energy from the plant and the time you can actually get the energy. Um, so for a dispatchable hydro facility, uh, they have very good ramping properties. Now for a run of the river hydro plant, you normally think about these as not being available for a lot of ramping. Uh, if you need to increase the power from a run of hydro facility, uh, it's not going to generally be available because you're running it at its design capacity most of the time anyway. Um, so hydro, one of the things we want to think about with hydro, the dispatchable hydro, not run of river hydro, but dispatchable hydro, is that it's a kind of energy storage. The water behind the dam is like a huge battery, and you can choose to use that energy to match your need for power. Next we have non-hydro renewables. And the initial capital cost is all over the place. Uh, it depends on how big a facility you want to build. Uh, you can put one turbine or one wind turbine uh, on a plot or a hundred wind turbines. You can build a 20 megawatt solar facility or a 500 megawatt solar facility. What's interesting about renewable technologies is they tend to have a relatively small minimum efficient scale. Although with wind turbines, as they become larger and larger and larger, the minimum efficient scale for wind turbines may be rising, but it's still much smaller than your average coal-fired or natural gas-fired power plant. Solar facilities are much more scalable, with a min minimum efficient scale on the order of uh, 10 megawatts or so. So you could think about building a much smaller solar facility and it being reasonably cost effective compared to a much, much larger solar facility. There may be some economies of scale, but they're not anything like the economies of scale that you get in larger power plants, base load power plants. Um, these facilities have very low operation and maintenance costs. Uh, and the zero variable costs, the cost of operating a wind turbine or a solar farm is zero once you have it in place. Uh, once the sun is there, once the wind is there, there's simply no cost of operating the facility. So there's zero variable cost or zero marginal cost. This is going to turn out to be a really important characteristic of renewables facilities. Another important characteristic of non-hydro renewables is that they have a low and somewhat unpredictable capacity factor. We think about 
uh, solar plants is having something on the order of 25% capacity factor, but of course that's an average. It might be higher or lower depending on the time of year, depending on uh, whether it's cloudy or rainy or sunny, and so the capacity factor will be something we can't predict with any certainty um, over the short and medium term, although we have some sense that over the long run we'll get a a certain average capacity factor from a solar plant. That'll depend, of course, on the geography of where the plant is installed. Uh, and that would be true of wind as well. Uh, another uh, really important characteristic of non-hydro renewables is they, they have this use when available characteristic. Because of their low variable costs, uh, these plants tend to be non-dispatchable. You can't call on them when you want to follow load. Uh, they're there if the resource is there. Uh, so they're not dispatchable. Um, you don't choose when they're available to run. Uh, on the other hand, you may be able to match certain renewables loads, to, uh, certain renewable supply to certain loads you have. So for example, you could think about matching output of solar facilities with irrigation uh, so that there would be a natural match between the supply and the use for the electricity from the resource and the intermittency of the renewable would be less of a concern uh, because if you're, if you're getting a certain amount of solar energy on average, you're getting enough electricity to run your irrigation. doesn't matter precisely what time of day. You don't have to store the electricity so you can do irrigation at night. And so there's some, uh, there are opportunities for us to match renewables resources to the load uh, to a load that they can serve without requiring any special other arrangements. Um, and I keep mentioning batteries uh, because everybody can sense that batteries will make a huge difference. Hold on a Sorry, I totally just Sorry. That. Yep. Because batteries. Yeah. So, uh, and I've been talking about batteries a lot up until now, uh, and it's really important because batteries, less expensive batteries, and larger capacity batteries uh, as they become available are going to make a huge difference in the value of renewals because it will greatly reduce their intermittency and certainly their short run variability. And we now have a number of cases where renewables facilities with batteries have been designed to offer improved flexibility and even ancillary services to the grid. So we're, we're entering sort of a new age where renewables actually can provide positive contributions to the grid rather than leaning on the grid for smoothing. They can become positive contrib contributors to grid stability.